Vision. It's Wednesday night guys, welcome to the stream, I hope you're well, I'm feeling absolutely fantastic, I'm in such a good mood, I'm ready to get a bit of painting done, I'm ready to look at your stuff during Loki approved at about 9 o'clock, and I'm just really really happy to have you guys all here, and just streaming, you guys know I love to stream, uh, so thanks very much for tuning in, I hope you're all really well, I hope you're all having a fantastic week so far, we're halfway through now guys, it's Wednesday night, which means there's only a couple of days left now, and then it's the weekend. And I cannot wait for the weekend. Cool stuff planned, uh, and I'll talk about that a little bit more later on. Uh, but yeah, thanks very much for joining me this evening. Lovely to see you all. We're going to be painting some uh, 3D printed Marvel Crisis Protocol terrain, uh, which is for an upcoming project uh, that I've got planned. So here we are. We've got the uh, Ruined Donut Shop. Donut Worry, this shop is called. Um, so we're going to start painting this, we're, not, we're obviously not going to finish it on the stream, but we are going to start painting it on the stream today. I'm trying to try and get the exterior stuff done, and then I'll work, probably work on the interior stuff uh, separately on a, a different time, either on a different stream, or just in my own time at some point, because um, occasionally I have that. And uh, yeah, if you've got any suggestions for the uh, flavour of the donut, what, what colour icing you would like, what flavour icing you would like, chuck them in the chat. And we'll, uh, we'll decide on that uh, later on. But let's have a quick look through the chat and see who is, it, who is here this evening. Uh, we've got, all the way from the other room, we've got Pirate Queen Pickle. Uh, I know that there was some more chat before we went live, so I'm just going to quickly see who that was. Frandog99 was here first off the bat. Can't make it because he's playing tennis, uh, which is uh, how uh, Sean Connery says about 10 o'clock, tennis. 
Uh, so that's Frando99. Thanks very much for popping in, Bob, buddy. I hope you enjoy it. Tennis, hope you win. Do you win at tennis? You do win at tennis, don't you? Obviously you do. It's a game. Next up, we've got Darth Booth and Reviews. Thanks very much for tuning in, bud. Welcome to the stream. You're a trifle early. Don't worry about being early, buddy. It's absolutely fine. Arrive whenever you want to. Early or late. It's all good with me. Uh, then we had Pirate Queen Pickle all the way from the other room. Supporting me, as always. Being an absolute superstar. Uh, then we've got Mr. Richard Smith. The man, the myth, the legend himself. I love you too, buddy. Welcome to the stream. Hope you are well. Uh, then we've got my oldest friend in the world, Mr. Lapunum. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Hope you are well. Thanks very much for stopping by. Uh, then we've got Mr. Monkey Boy. Thanks very much for tuning in, bud. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're well this evening. Uh, next up, we've got Rimmers Rook Miniatures, the man, the myth, the legend himself from Monday Nights. King of Monday Night Streaming. The only stream, I believe, on Monday Nights now. Uh, I believe that the Hobby Corner is no longer doing the playthrough streams on a Monday, so it is all down to Ravens Rook Miniatures. Go and check him out. Monday Night Streams, it's the place to be. Uh, we've got ha Night Nightbots here and Hyped. Welcome to the stream, Nightbot. Uh, we've got Gina Doherty. Welcome to the stream. We've got Al Ritchie. Welcome to the stream, buddy. Hope you are well. Uh, we've also got Dang. Welcome, buddy. Welcome to the stream. Hope you're well, buddy. Thanks very much for stopping by. Uh... We've also got Lupus Carnis. Welcome to the stream. Thanks very much for tuning in. Uh, we've got the original Kesbian. Welcome to the stream. And I think that that is everybody in the chat right now. Um, thank you very much, each and every one of you, for tuning in. It's lovely to see you all here. Thank you very much for joining us. I'm really, really excited to get uh, cracking with some painting. Um, I got a little bit of work done. You'll not be able to see because the camera zoomed in too much. I've got a little bit of work done uh, getting some uh, Marvel Crisis Protocol minis uh, primed and zenithals the other day. Um, ready for uh, a video that I'm doing. Not the same video that this is going to be in. This is for a different video. Uh, this is for... This is for... I'm doing a board build. I'm doing an actual gaming table. I am doing a board build. I cannot wait. I'm so excited. I'm going to be recording that next week and hopefully that will be out the week after maybe. I don't know. We'll see. Um, and this is going to be on it, along with a load of other stuff. But yeah, I, I primed up um, and zenithled uh, the rest of the core box. So I've got, uh, there's like eight models down there that are all primed. And I've got all the other bits of terrain that came in the core box up here, all primed as well. Um, so yeah, I'll be getting those printed out, uh, painted up and all that sort of stuff. Everyone's saying, uh, let's have a look. Pink, Bob and Donuts. Pink icing on the donut. Uh, definitely pink icing going the Simpsons style. Yeah, I think I think the Simpsons style, it's a good call. Look, at, let's, let's switch over to the desk view so you can see the donut. So here it is. Let's, uh, this is the, this is the ruined donut shop. Uh, let me just, there you go. So yeah, I think the getting the pink icing on that donut is is a good shout, um, definitely. So the plan for tonight, I'm gonna try and work on the exterior. I think uh, go around, get all this sort of painted up. Um, definitely all the brickwork at least. Uh, I'm gonna. I was thinking about airbrushing it, and then I figured after doing the dry brushing video, I wanted to try. Um, and do some more dry brush work. So that's what I'm going to be doing tonight using the Artist Opus dry brushes uh, to do all the brickwork and, and try and do as much of it with that as I can. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how we get on. Um, so I hope you guys are all well. Nearly the weekend. Well, I say nearly the weekend. It's not really nearly the weekend, but it's not miles away, like over halfway there. So that's good. And uh, this weekend, I am taking Alfie over to Murfield Miniatures uh, because they are they've started doing like having organizing po Pokemon cards, um, gaming and stuff. I saw a post last weekend that got a load of kids in all playing Pokemon cards. Alfie likes playing Pokemon. I mean, to be fair, I like playing Pokemon cards. Um, although I don't think it'd be very fair for me to go and play against the kids. But I'm going to take Alfie. I think it'll be cool for him to play against uh, some of the kids and stuff and, and try and, and learn a bit more and play a bit more, get a bit of social in there. Uh, and it means I get to go and chat with Mark and uh, have a nosy round. And I'll be on, on hand for any Pokemon card questions. Uh, so very much looking forward to that Saturday afternoon. Um, other than that, no real plans this weekend. It's going to be nice and chill, I think. Um, I want to get some painting and filming done. 
Um, I want to get a bit of editing done and uh, yeah, just generally have a nice time. Alfie wants to play Minecraft a little bit. Uh, so yeah, very much going to uh, very much going to just chill out this weekend. Um, as you can tell, I am back to normal. I am absolutely fine after last week's. Uh, let's just call it last week's adventure. Um, feeling absolutely fantastic now. Really, really just happy to be here. I'm very, very excited. Um, we're going to get cracking. Uh, sharpish because I want to try and get as much done on this as I can before Loki approved and then uh, we'll see how much time we've got left after Loki approved if we uh, if we can do any more but we'll see uh, Big Mac Dan Skull welcome to the stream bird hope you're well thank you very much for popping in um, do you build your own decks or go with pre-made decks uh, I've done both so I've built my own decks in the past I'm gonna swap over to the desk view so we can get cracking um, so I've done both. I've, I've built my own decks uh, for Pokemon cards. Um, and I've also used sort of pre-made ones. Alfie is still using pre-made ones. Um, because, I mean, he's only eight. And uh, he, he's, uh, he's been learning the rules and, and, and cracking on with uh, playing and stuff. But he's only really ever played against me. He's not played... He's not really played against anyone else. So I figured... It'll be a nice opportunity for him to, uh, like I said, go and uh, play against some other people, sort of like closer to his own age and, you know, the people that aren't me. Um, my favourite deck that I've got at the moment is like a recycling water deck. It is absolutely disgusting. Um, right, let's get that up there. Let's get that there. I've got my dampening pad, which I'm going to use properly. So I spoke to Byron after I put that video out uh, and laughed about the fact that I over dampened my dampening pad when I was painting up my Hulk model uh, and he said everyone does it, everyone does it exactly the same so not to worry um, which is you know nice to hear. Uh, it did upset me using the, uh, using the, the texture uh, pad for the first time because it was so nice and clean and obviously now it's not but now that I've used it I'm okay with it so we're gonna go in I'm just stippling at first to get a nice base nice brown base coat down on these bricks uh, what's the texture palette used for regarding dry brushing uh, so it's mainly to to get the paint off the paintbrush um, normally you'd use like some cardboard or some kitchen roll or you know something like that um, the texture palette it's obviously a bit more textured than uh, those things uh, or like some people like use the back of the hands it's more textured than that so it helps to get the get the paint off um, I mean it, it's pretty cool you can just use other stuff you know you can just use like um, cardboard or, or kitchen roll or whatever I've been using that for years it's only, it's only since I got these these sent out that I've used these and tried them and it has been good but it's not an essential thing I wouldn't say anything that's got any sort of texture on you can make your own uh, Dave from MS Paints has got an amazing video that's it without your dry brush to make sure you've not got too much paint on or, or not enough paint on um, so it's that, that were that's pretty that's a good video I'm gonna put a bit more water in there good evening Quingo welcome to the stream buddy hope you're well thanks very much for uh, popping in um, and different gear TV welcome to the stream void captain bazooka welcome 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 hope you guys are all well thanks very much for popping in So for stippling, I'm not worried about getting too much of the paint off. Uh, and because this is just sort of like the base coat, the, the brown, I don't mind where it goes really either. Like if it catches onto some of the other areas, that's fine. I'm mainly aiming for the brickwork, but if it goes over onto some of the other areas, that's fine. Not a problem. I was going to airbrush this. Um, but like I said, I fancied after, after 
like doing the Hulk video, I, I, I really enjoyed using these uh, brushes. Uh, so decided that I wanted to use them for something else. So that's what we're doing tonight. We're giving them another outing in uh, getting the uh, getting this terrain started. I mean, I might go in on this with the airbrush at a later date anyway, just to like smooth some bits out. But I think I wanted to get um, get the majority done with the with the dry brushes and, like I said, just give them another go. Um, I'm planning on some sort of collab with Byron at some point in the nearish future when I get chance to uh, head over and meet up with him. Uh, he's, uh, he's eager for us to to get together and do something. So. Look forward to that on both of our channels, I guess. Uh, it would be fun. Seems like a decent guy. I'd uh, had a laugh when we, when we were a chat, so. And I'm always open to doing more collabs with people. So, for the base coat, because I'm just stippling this on, I don't mind if it's a little bit damper going on a little bit heavier, because I want this to be more or less a, a full covering. And the reason we're stippling it on uh, is just to help help get that covering on there. I'm not too worried about the dry brushing part for this uh, because we want to cover everything rather than just uh, getting bits of like the highlights of the texture. So going in pretty heavy with it. And like I said, this is just for the the base brown. We'll get that all the way around. Uh, <clears throat> uh, happy Wednesday, everyone, from Mr. Gertie. Welcome to the stream, dude. Hope you're well. Happy Wednesday, indeed. Uh, Buffnet, welcome to the stream, dude. Hope you're well. Thanks very much for popping by. One of our fantastic moderators. Um, can we have an F in the chat as well, please, for uh, Bram, who is uh, deep in study... Uh, study mode at the moment for his next exam which is why he's not been around uh, as much recently uh, he will be back with us uh, hopefully after next week which I believe is when his exam is and uh, yeah but yeah F's in the chat for our uh, temporarily fallen comrade Uh, knackered but good, back from London today, uh, just been organising bits and bobs out, determined to get some hobbying sort of soon. Get on it man, but uh, look after yourself as well, don't push yourself too much. Uh, how do those Opus brushes compare to the Armoured Painter dry brush ones? They look the same but it's worth the extra cash. That, that's kind of a question that I can't really answer. Um, so the, the, what I will say, the set that I've got of the Artist Opus brushes is nice. I get, I've got five brushes. I'll show you this set in a, in a second. It's a, a bit sticky there and it's pulled her hair off. Um, so the set that I got from Artist Opus is very nice. Um, you get five brushes in it and they go from this one, which is the biggest, all the way down to like a super tiny one. Now, I have used the Army Painter ones. So full disclosure, I paid for the Army Painter ones myself. So this is the uh, this is the full set. So you get the XL, which is the one that I'm using at the moment. Then you get the large, the medium, the small, and then the extra small in this set. And the extra small is like ridiculously tiny, like. Proper, proper tiny. Um, now, I I got sent these for free. So full disclosure, I did not pay for these. I believe that this set, I think, is about £85. Now, it does look nice. It comes in a nice fancy box. Uh, they are absolutely fantastic brushes. The Army Painter set, you only get three in the set. And I, I think from, I've not got them to hand, but I think that they are the same size as the large, the medium, and the small. Um, so you don't get one as big as this and you don't get the super small one. Um, 
which is fine for for like the majority of stuff. Uh, from trying these, um, from trying these, um, I really like using the bigger brush, uh, especially for like the first couple of layers on whatever I'm painting. Um, but I th if it was if I was buying them. I think now that I've got them, I probably would buy another set. I don't know. Um, if it was my first set that I was buying, I would probably do what I did do and buy the Army Painter set. Um, had to watch the Obi-Wan teaser trailer. I watched that as well just before the stream. I am very, very excited. Uh, my Army Painter set disintegrated on first use. My Army Painter set is still going. Uh, I've not had any issues with it. I've not had any problems with it. Like I say, I've been using these ones because they sent them out and I wanted to try them and see if there was much or any difference. Um, they are very, very nice. I've not had any issues with them yet. So, um, Tabletop, save money and get cheap multi-packs of makeup brushes. All the proper ones are a scam. They just look fancy. See, I think the I think both these and the Army Painter ones perform a hell of a lot better than makeup brushes. Um, if I'm honest. Having used makeup brushes before and then switching to these, I think that these perform nicer. Personal preference though, there's absolutely no right or wrong brush to use or brand to use or whatever. But I wouldn't I would not go back to using makeup brushes now after using these. And the and the armor painter ones. Um, I think that they're both a hell of a lot better. Yeah, good evening tabletop as well, buddy. Welcome to the stream. But the the thing is, it's when you say like, are they worth it? That's kind of a, a question that only the individual person can answer. Because it kind of depends on what you want to spend the money on. So like I said, I think that this set is about £85. The Army Painter set is, I think, like £15. So there's a massive difference in price. Now this set you do get a couple of extra brushes, bigger size, a smaller size, um, which is very very nice. But um, whether that is worth it for you, I don't know. I've not been using them long enough to offer like a proper critique and comparison between the two. I've only used them like this is the second time using the dry brushes, the uh, Artist Opus ones. I've used the army painter ones for a while. They've been fine. I've had no issues with them. Um, but this is only my second time using these ones. So I did look at makeup brushes, uh, but they came out the same price as the army painter ones. The army painter ones are nice and cheap. And like I said, I've had no issues with them. Um, and I find that they are better for dry brushing because they're generally like shorter uh, bristles than makeup brushes. I find that most makeup brushes are longer bristles um and they um they, they don't perform as well from my own experience i mean i guess it depends on what makeup brushes you buy um the ones that i've bought that's the experience that i've had Like I would, I would recommend these, but again, it really depends on like how much you're wanting to spend. I think the Army Painter ones are uh, a perfect budget budget ones because they think they're like, like, like I said, I'm sure they're like 15 quid. I'm sure they're like fifteen pounds. Don't worry about being late, buddy. There's no such thing as late here, Dean. Um, 
I've got the armor painted ones, they're really nice for the price. Yeah, I think the armor painted ones are, are, are very, very nice. I think, like, the price the price tag's definitely a lot more um, alluring. It also depends how much you're going to use them. If all you do is dry brush, they weigh down fast, so the cheaper the better. Yeah, if you dry brush in a lot... Again, it depends. It depends what it depends what you want in, I guess. Like, I I always say the same for like normal painting brushes. Like, I do sort of a good eighty to ninety percent of um. I I I do about eighty to ninety percent of my painting of miniatures with cheap synthetic brushes that I buy like four for three pound from the works. I only use my expensive stuff my like Kalinsky sable brushes and stuff like that for like final highlights and things like that I don't use them for um, the majority of my painting um, now dry brushes I wouldn't like I said I've used cheaper makeup brushes before and I don't get anywhere near as good a result as I do with these but I don't dry brush a hell of a lot, so I guess they're not going to wear down quite as much. If you dry brush it a lot, then maybe it would do. Um, I agree, I like the Army Painter ones, but that case with the Opus ones looks like it's worth a bit. It is, I mean, it is a nice case, but it is a case like... To me, I'm more... I'd be more interested in like the, the brushes themselves. The case is nice to have, but realistically, it doesn't really. That's not what would sell me on this. Um, like I said, it is nice, and they're really nicely designed and packaged and stuff. That's not. I've not. Like I said, I've got no issues with the Artist Opus ones. I've, this is only the second time I've used them, but I've no issues so far. Um, but I've also got no issues with the Army Painter ones, which I've been using for. I bought them when I went to Grim Dice for the first time, so that was back in last August. Um, I b bought them there when I went in there because it was the first time I'd seen them in a store, um, and I bought them and I've been using them since then. Although again, I've, I've really only used them a handful of times. Uh, I'm just adding, I've just dry brushed over, but now I'm just going to stipple on this brighter colour a little bit. What I want to try and do with these bricks is get like a really nice sort of, some different sort of colours and hues across it, rather than it just being a flat, sort of the same colour all the way across. Um, just because bricks, brick is often like that, you get like slight variations. I think this brick's looking uh, quite nice so far, to be honest. I'll post pictures up and stuff um, on the on the Discord server later on. If you're not in the Discord server, uh, pop along and join us. We are a lovely, 
little community, which I'm super proud of. Super proud of each and every one of you for being super, super awesome. Aaron Butler, welcome to the stream, buddy. Hope you are well. Thanks very much for stopping by. I'm pretty happy with these bricks so far. Little Mule, welcome to the stream, bud. Hope you're well. Um, let's get ourselves a... We'll get a couple of... We'll get a red. And uh, mix a bit of this red in with this uh, brown that we were using. I don't want to go too red with it, even though it is a, like a sort of comic book terrain. Looks like you've been around spray black with those black fingers. It's because I sprayed this uh, terrain piece just before, not long before the stream. And then I figured I'm going to be dry brushing, so I'm going to get paint everywhere. So there's no no point in sort of washing it off at the moment. So I'm going to have to be mucky, messy again afterwards anyway. Um, so we introduce a little bit of red into here. Need a coffee ASAP. I always need coffee. Always. It's a permanent state of mind. So I'm aiming mainly, as the lighter I go with these colours, I'm trying to aim uh, mainly for the top, but then I am adding in. So you can see, I don't know how well that's showing up because of the light. You can see that I've not just done it all the way across. I've added like different bits in different areas so that it's uh, a very, uh, you know, there's, there's ni nice different variations amongst the brick. There's parts of this that are still tacky. Tacky. And then what I'm going to do once we've just got this last little bit here, I'm going to take a bit more of the red, still with a little bit of the brown on, but a little bit more of the red. Oh, missed that broken away bit there. Look. Uh, on a smaller brush, and uh, just try and get a bit of a. highlight in there that might be a bit too red on that one so we'll put that brush to one side and we're going to use uh, the smaller one and again mix that over the brown just so it's got a little bit of it in there you can see that is mainly red and then I'm just going to And what I want to do with this is just catch some of the edges. 
So a lot of the trim and stuff, I'll be going in and painting with a, a regular brush and picking out the detail and stuff. So this is mainly for the big, the bulk work of the, of the brick work. And this is just to, again, add a little bit more variety, just sort of stippling, catching on the downward strokes. I'm pretty happy with that brickwork actually. And that's taken me 20 minutes. Twenty minutes and that brickwork is done. I mean this is all gonna be like getting covered in weathering powder and all that sort of stuff. Um so that'll make make things a hell of a lot easier. Um we should probably uh tell you what, let's get some grey on the go. <clears throat> Going for a caramel latte at McDonald's. Oof! Treat yourself. I love a nice caramel latte. Everyone goes mental for vanilla, but I've always been more of a caramel fan. Uh, you should have got them uh, charcoals and pastels, pickle. If you'd seen them, uh, seen them there, because they'll be super cheap. Perfect for breaking down and uh, making. Uh, Weathering powders. Right, let's get, uh, we've got the roof that's caved in, like down here, get some grey on that, and on this bit here, this bit here, um, although I should probably do the floor first, which I think I'm also going to do grey and then maybe hit with a, like a cream or something, a little bit like cream tiles. I might end up hitting that with the airbrush to be honest. I guess we'll see. I'm quite happy with the bricks. It'll probably all get covered in a wash at some point anyway, but that'll be again once it's on the board probably. And now everyone is just talking about shops. What has been your guys' sort of best ever sort of bargain find in terms of stuff for miniature painting? So it doesn't have to be something that is like actually something that's for miniature painting, like you know a model or whatever. It can be something that you found in like you know Aldi or something that you've then used. So like as an example, like I've got some oil paints from the works. Which, yes, are oil paints, but they're like really cheap oil paints, and I'm planning on having a go with those at some point and trying them out on some minis. Like, another example could be like what Wendy's just said about the uh, pastels and stuff. Not fruit pastels. I sorted all that footage though, Lapunu. It was fine. I've sorted it all today. I've done a fix. I 
I might hit these bricks with a bit of a grey dry brush, you know, just to... Well, that's more, more turning pink because of the little bit of red that's left on him. I think I'm going to go in into this with the airbrush just because it's going to be easier to get in. Uh, easy to get into all these sort of nooks and crannies in there. The only problem with this terrain, it's very, very nice. Um, but it's also very awkward to get into because it's all one piece. What time are we on? 22. One day, one day, I would like to do some airbrushing on a live stream. Because um, I know there's a lot of people that ask questions about airbrushing and stuff a lot. And I would like to do a live stream where I'm airbrushing stuff. And I can show you how to like use it, clean it, set it up. All that sort of stuff. Um, but that's, that's not today. <laughs> airbrushing is noisy. But I'm sure that we would manage. I don't want to paint the donut until I've painted like all the stuff around it because I'm going to end up like getting it again. Uh... Although I kind of want to paint the donut as well at the same time. Let's paint the donut. Why not? Let's start painting the donut. Blue box brew. Currently airbrushing my second dragon to go with the one in Loki approved. Absolutely fantastic. I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to looking through Loki approved. I mean, I look forward to it every week, but uh, sometimes I feel like I just I need to get to say it out loud. I'm looking forward to seeing what you guys have been up to. Stephen Cause, good afternoon, Fickle Jar. Good afternoon, welcome to the stream. doing it as well. Can't miss any of the donut. Don't worry about all the bits that I'm going over because they will be getting painted pink at some point in a bit anyway. Super awkward to get to all these <laughs> little nooks and crannies.
See, when I was setting this off printing, I had the option to print it in like separate pieces, and I thought, no, nah, just print it all together, it'd be fine. Should have printed it in separate pieces, it would have made it a hell of a lot easier to paint. Ah oh, well. Lesson learned. Let's add a bit of Bane Blade Brown. I think that when this is um, in the table and stuff as well, there's going to be loads of bits of it that will be covered up with uh, base ready and like terrain stuff. So I'm not too concerned, especially like anything that's like around the floor. Like the bottom of this donut is like a bit of a struggle to get to, the bit that it's sat on. I'm not too concerned because it, most of that will be covered with. Um, like some stuff like to, for rubble and stuff like that once it's like on the table this is just sort of painting it up for before it goes on I've got a load of terrain to paint um, I think I'm, I'll be using a combination of um, dry brushing and airbrushing depending on like what the piece is like how big it is what I want to do with it all that sort of stuff um, I'll just use a, a combination of all of them to hopefully get the best result. Essex boys, welcome to the stream, buddy. Hope you are well. Thanks very much for tuning in. Yes, we're doing terrain. And then now for the pink glaze. Now I need to start off. Can't go straight to pink. Uh, or not to not to the pink that I need to go to. So we are going to use Tusco fur as uh, a starting point. We made a mess of that donut. <laughs> That's what she said. Uh, welcome, buddy. Welcome, Alston. Hope you're well. Thanks very much for tuning in and stopping by. We're painting my donut live on stream.
This isn't too much. Of, I like. I was I mean, already about using this as a base color, but I don't think it's too bad as a base color for pink. We'll obviously be making it more pink in a bit, but as a base to go from black to this. I think that's too bad a colour. Don't make a mess. Brilliant. All right, let's get a pink. Uh, I mean, this is this is pretty pink. <laughs> We're not doing a brown donut, Elston. There's always one. on this and then we'll be ready to go over and look at Loki approved I think so all I'm doing for this is just using mainly stippling um, so into interchanging between stippling and actually actual dry brushing. I don't need this to look like an actual donut. I need this to look like a donut sign. So if it's not like 100% perfect, that's fine. Are you perking your donut? Brilliant. Make sure it's colour matched to the Simpsons one you're getting unliked and uncommented and unsubscribed. Uh, I think it's pretty much going to be spot on for the Simpsons one. I'll check. I'll get the boys in the lab to check for me. Just so that I can confirm. Now that we've got those couple of layers on, we can go in with the just with the pink. There we go, this is looking like a donut now. I mean, it, it looked like a donut before. Um, it's just painted like a donut now, I guess.
Is it a chocolate donut? It's not a chocolate donut. It is. It's a. It's a. It's a uh, iced donut. I don't believe this one is going to have any filling in it. Now, I mean, that's definitely a donut. Uh, for science purposes, approximately how much stuff could you fit in your donut hole? Uh, probably not too much. There we go, one donut. Just needs the sprinkles painting on it now. Just stick some rice in it. It's got sprinkles on it. Anyone else want an icing covered donut now? Yeah, me. So tonight we've got the outer brickwork done and the donut. I'll get everything else done probably another time. You're a donut. Brilliant. Fantastic. Add more rice. I don't need to add any rice. Just giving the uh, dry brushes a quick dip and a clean. Does the dry brush mat wash clean or does it stay stained 
Um, do you know what? I don't actually know. I'm presuming because it is it's it's like it's like laser cut MDF. Um, so I'm presuming that you can't really wash it. Um, but I've not thought to ask and I've not tried. Um, I've just sort of been using the one side and then just sort of working over the top of previous paint because once it's sort of on and dried, like it's on and dried, isn't it? Um, I mean, I've seen. Like when I've watched some of like the tutorials and stuff that Byron's done, like he's got, he's got. There we go, brushes, nice and cleanish. They need a proper clean, like later on. But for now, they'll they'll do. I've took the majority of the paint off. Um, that's one thing I would say. No matter what dry brushes you're using, wash them. Like when you finish with them, don't leave it until the end of your session because they will crust up, uh, real bad. Um, but yeah, what I was going to say is uh, a lot of the stuff when I've seen like Byron doing videos and stuff I've noticed that he's using a, a texture mat that he must have had for a while and he looks like he just primes it uh, Just like paints it black and then I guess when he's covered it He'll just paint it black again. So that it sort of starts off as one color um, Which is one way around it, I guess um, Yeah, so decent progress on this so far to be honest. I'm probably not going to do much more on this tonight like even if we have got time um, just because I'm going to get the airbrush in airbrush like the inner walls and like behind the donut and stuff because it's easy to get to than trying to dry brush it I didn't think it through if I thought on I'd have done one of the other terrain pieces that I've got um, that is just asset thing it, it, it's it's a solid piece and there's like no internals to do and I'd have just done that uh, to show off the dry brush but I didn't think and I, I was just excited to paint the donut so um that's probably all we'll do on this tonight, and we'll just have a bit of a natter later on once Loki approved is done. But I'm happy with the brickwork on that. I think it looks pretty cool. The donut looks good. Um, so yeah, happy enough with that. Um, I am just ignoring everybody. I'm ignoring all the chat. I know Elston is trying to... I don't know what he's trying to do. He's trying to make me laugh, I guess. You have to try harder than that, I'm afraid. Uh, so we'll move, put that over there. I'm just going to put my donut behind me. At least it's a pink donut and not a brown one. Elson's already made that joke. Uh, we're going to take a look at Loki Approved in a second. There, put that there, chip that up there, close that. I'm not reading that, Elston. I've already read it, obviously. I know what it says, but I'm not reading it out. Once was enough yesterday. I don't pay attention when Elston makes jokes either. Move all them. There we go. Nice and organised, tidy. So this is the this is the desk view when I'm not painting. <laughs> it's nice and organised. Uh, but yeah, Raven's Rook. So I I don't think you can wash it clean. I would probably just reprime it when it gets to a point where I'm like, it's messy. Um. So yeah, right. Let's go and take a look over on Lucky Proved and see what all of you guys have been working on. Uh, over the last week So here we are over on the discord uh, thank you Buffnet, um For opening the, the channel today. I completely forgot. I've had a busy day at work today. I've been editing all day um, and, and planning stuff You can call your map rich then because when you're done you can spray it black and start again brilliant um, So yeah, I've had a busy day at work. I've been like pretty much non-stop Well, not non-stop as in like properly non-stop, but I have been doing stuff all day um, And everyone else has been busy as well. We all, we all none of us forgot. We just decided to open it later on purpose <laughs> We'll go with that one, uh, but thanks Buffnet for opening up the channel uh, for us this evening uh, first off the bat, we've got Darth Booth reviews. 
A uh, pair of Bad Squidward Games miniatures I finished this week for my all-female Frostgrave Warband. These look really cool. I do like the Bad Squidward stuff. Um, and he makes some really nice uh, models. Uh, pardon me. Um, some nice female miniatures. Uh, it's really cool. They've done a nice paint job on these, but it's always nice to see more Frostgrave stuff. That's an underrated uh, game system. Uh, underappreciated. It doesn't get as much love as it should do. Uh, but yeah, these look these look cool. Awesome work, buddy. Uh, next up, we've got Void Captain Bazooka. I uh, finished making the ends of the barrels for my rotor cannon. Nice. So this is uh, on <clears throat> on with uh, getting the build on with this. Look at these. This looks awesome. This looks awesome, dude. Nice work. Looking forward to seeing that on a mini. Uh, next up, we've got uh, Mr. Goethe. Went a bit overboard this week. Built a war boss in mega armor. Some grot kit boys to finish a squad of tank busters. Uh, a big shooter spanner. A six pack of boys to finish a squad of ten. Started a big mech with a KFF kit bash. And finally got around to painting my magnetized bomb squig slash attack squig that I named Gebri. Wow, so Fish has been a busy boy. Let's have a look at some of the stuff that he's been working on. That looks cool. I really like that model. I like the goggles. I like the goggles on his head. That's a really cool model. I love that. These look awesome. I love that these are grots. I love that these are grots with like massive bodies. <laughs> this is so cool. Nice work. Yeah, they're awesome. I love these. This is cool. Nice work on these. These look awesome. lovely to see more uh, more orcs everyone loves orcs though don't they love this guy this is awesome and here's Jebri or Gebri love this such a cool paint job Look at this, this is awesome. Awesome work, dude. Awesome, awesome work. Love it. Nice work, dude. Cheers for submitting as well. Uh, next up, we've got Raven's Rook. Uh, just, uh, just the finishing touches on the last Death Copses to do. However, as always, started next project, Kit Bashed Grot Tanks. Got three built, just one to go. Still very early picks. So these look fantastic, dude. I love the yellow. It looks absolutely awesome. Spot on. I love these models so much. They're so nice. The load's better than the old Defcopters uh, from Blackreach. I think I've said that before, but it's still true. Is he a look the boss? Cucumba. Cucumba. Uh, this is, yeah, I love these models. Like, Yellow is really nice. Doing a really nice job. It's nice and smooth. And like I said, the models are the models are fantastic themselves. I like this one. I like it. has got like bits of paint just, like chipped away and stuff. That's cool. Awesome work on these, dude. And 
this is the next uh, kit bash. This is such a cool idea. Absolutely fantastic. These are so good. Looking forward to seeing this one all painted up, dude. It's going to look awesome. Uh, next up, we've got Connor, uh, Devilfish and Hammerhead. All in on that tower. I love that glow on the engines and on the uh, on the little hatch there. That's uh, that's super cool. Oh, it's all over the place. I do love the uh, your tower though. Uh, they are very very nice. I love the color scheme. Very very minimalist, but also very striking at the same time. Um, it's very very cool. Look at this. That's awesome, dude. I love that. I love those those spots of green all over. Boo to orcs. Can't wait to smash your orcs. Soon, dude. It'll be soon. Hey, your boss is here. He's always here. Always watching. Such a cool model. Awesome paint job, dude. Uh, and my Blades of the Forgotten Stormcast Dragon. You can't really see it, but the Sword and the Shield has colour shift paints on them. Nice. Colour shift's one of those. It's hard to take photos of because the the nature of colour shift paint is that it, it changes colour as you move the model. And obviously a photo is just a still image. So it's it's hard to show off in photos, but I appreciate the uh, the attempt. Best, best way I've found to... To try and get the uh, color shift to show up on photos is to have a couple of different light sources so that some of the sort of pigments pick up and reflect from one light source and some pick up and reflect from the other so it gives that illusion but it's easiest to show it off in person or on video really uh, but this looks fantastic i love the wings they look really really cool some nice shading on those i love the purple It's very, very cool. I want to paint a dragon. Not for, not even for an army, because I don't do Stormcast. I just want to paint a dragon. There's really cool models. If anyone wants to commission me to paint a dragon, <laughs> uh, hit me up. <laughs> but yeah, this looks, this looks spot on, dude. Uh, next up we've got KT working on my captain from Imperium issue five. This is the this is the limited one that's only available in Imperium, I, I believe. I don't think it's been released elsewhere. Uh, uh, but it's a cool captain. Um, this is looking spot on. I do like how clean and crisp uh, your Marines are, KT. Um, even if it is an Ultramarine. <laughs> Only joking, no real hate for Ultramarines. And this month's uh, community focus is Ultramarines and uh, Orcs and... Uh, go on, what else? Orcs, Tyranids, De Death Guard, Black Legion. Basically anyone that's been to McCrag or near it. I think I might actually paint an Ultramarine, you know. I don't know. Uh, but yeah, awesome work on that, Katie. Fantastic job. Uh, next up, we've got Al Ritchie. Uh, finished off the Splintered Fang this weekend, and now I'm building an uh, Arcanaut frigate. These look awesome. I love the um, I love this uh, green um, scales on the cloaks. Like you can see it here on uh, it's like a tabard. And you can see it here on like draped over his arm on that cloak. I love those green scales on those. They're really nice. I also like these little flashes of yellow on whatever it is that they've got like on the waists. Like some sort of vials or knife pouch or something. Um, it's like a really nice spot colour. These are very, very nice. Yeah, awesome colour scheme. Awesome paint job. 
Really, really like these. Very, very nice. Thanks for the reminder that I have Death Guard and Poxwalkers to paint. No problem, it's what I'm here for. Literally, just to remind you guys to paint stuff. <laughs> uh, next up, we've got Dean Paints Things. Finished up an old project tonight. Some final highlights and a quick dunk in some base ready. So we've got uh, some Moria Goblins and a Cave Troll uh, for Lord of the Rings. These look awesome, dude. I love the uh, the paint on uh, the troll, the sort of blue and the sort of uh, creamy sort of colour for the uh, underbelly and stuff. Looks very very nice. Awesome work on uh, awesome work on those, dude. Uh, Lu Gwen has uh, been working on a Gandalf by the looks of it. Uh, also for Lord of the Rings, a couple of Lord of the Rings things in the in the Loki approved this evening. It's nice to see. Uh, awesome work, Lou. That looks fantastic. Uh, not forty seven. Uh, some more Marvel Crisis Protocol, Black Widow, and Doctor Strange this week. So Black Widow looks absolutely top notch. Really, really like that. There's not an awful lot you can do with Black Widow because, I mean, it's mainly wearing black. So it's just a sort of little details that you have to pick out and, and her hair and stuff. Uh, but it's a cracking job. It looks spot on. It doesn't look, uh, it doesn't look too much. It doesn't look too dark. Really, really nice job. And then the Doctor Strange looks absolutely awesome. I love this. Um, it's such a cool model. I've got the other one. Um, the one with the, is it like a tentacle on his base or something? Um, I've got that one which I need to paint, um, which I'll be doing for a video at some point uh, in the next couple of months, I think. I've also got the uh, Sanctum, Samtor uh, Sanctum Sanctorum. <laughs> Uh, which I'll probably be doing for the same video, um, which I'm very much looking forward to painting. But this looks spot on. I love the spell uh, colour, the spell casting colour around him. I do want to get this model myself to paint just because I really like it. I think it's such a cool model. Uh, you did a cracking job on that one, bud. So well done. Uh, next up, we've got Caesar. Uh, finished the bases and added a little varnish to these two. Raining Hell Cabal is coming along nicely. Nicely? Nicely. Um, so this is the uh, the hound, like the flamey hound guy. Looks fantastic. I love the basing. That's really cool. And I like the basing on this one as well. I still love that sword. I think that looks fantastic, dude. Awesome work on that uh, molten sword. And again, basing looks uh, top notch. Looks spot on. Coming along nicely indeed, buddy. These are looking awesome. I'm loving all the fire and stuff. But I mean, I would say that because, you know, I'm a Salamander's player. <laughs> I said player. I'm a Salamander's collector. Uh, but yeah, they look spot on, dude. I love this clerk as well. Still think that looks awesome. The uh, the Turbo Dot colour shift. Very good, very nice. Very good, very nice. Uh, next up, we've got Big McDanskull. Uh, Flash Bosch, Flash, I can't speak tonight. Flash Boss Kit Bash Work in Progress. This is awesome. I love the pirate hat. I love, uh, I love this uh, Kit Bash. This is awesome. I can't wait to see some paint on this one, dude. It's going to look top notch. Um, I do love, yeah, I do love that that head, the beard, and the hat, the pipe. Did you notice the pipe? Um, that's really cool. That's a really cool head. Uh, I like it's got like a, it looks like he's got like a big coat on as well. So he look, he's gonna look like yeah like proper like flash gits. Uh, is awesome. Loving it, dude. Can't wait to see that one done. Look at this. He's a big beefy boy. Awesome work, man. Looking forward to seeing that one painted up, dude. Uh, next up, we've got oh some more from uh, not 47. Changing up Bruce Banner a wee bit. 
Oh, so this is the Hulk model. So this is the one that I painted for my most recent video um, using the dry brush. Same as tonight. Um, a small conversion on him, giving him some uh, debris that he's holding in his other hand. That was awesome. Uh, absolutely a cracking job on that. It adds it adds a lot to the model. Uh, looking forward to seeing you paint this one up. It was a really fun model to paint. I really really enjoyed painting mine. Uh, kind of want to get a second one <laughs> and paint another one because this one it didn't take me long at all. It was sort of over before I like realised what was happening. Um, but it's a really cool model. Um, I had a couple of issues with uh, mold lines on mine. Uh, not mold lines, like joint lines. All the other Marvel stuff that I've got has gone together really really nicely. And there were a couple of points on this one that didn't quite line up right, um, so I had to fill a couple of gaps, um, and I didn't real I didn't sort of notice them as much until I started painting, and then it was very obvious, and I was like ah, but by that point it was already too late, so I just sort of ignored them. Um, but this looks this looks cracking, looks spot on. Awesome work, bud. Looking forward to seeing that one uh, painted up, the mean green machine. Uh, next up we've got Essex, but look at this! Oh, I love this! Uh, is this uh, got my first 10 Beast Snagger boys done working on a kit bash truck. These Beast Snaggers look amazing, look at this! Uh, like lizard, like lizard skin, lizard spine across this guy's back. Oh, I love them. They're awesome. Love this guy's purple. Uh, it's not his hair, it's like a top of his cloak oh spot on this guy's got some like blue crystally got carapace on his back are they all from like different I guess in different beasts like different sort of uh, creatures that they've they've killed and used the skin to make cloaks and, and armor and stuff like scales and stuff that's really cool love this red I like that they're all different as well They're all different, so they've all like killed different monsters. Yeah, these are awesome. Yeah, I really like these dude. These look fantastic. And then kit bashed, uh, keep working on a kit bash on a truck. Again, fantastic work. Essex Boys does the best kit bashing stuff. Uh, absolutely fantastic, dude. Looking forward to seeing this one painted up as well. Awesome work. Uh, next up, uh, we've got the goose. Mr. Goose. It's a wild goose. Um. Both dragons built and uh, built and primed, ready to paint. These look awesome, dude. I'm very jealous that you've got both the dragons. Um, very, very jealous indeed. I'm looking forward to seeing these painted up, though, dude. Um, because you've been absolutely smashing out the painting recently as well. Um, so, yeah, looking forward to seeing these painted up. What colours are you thinking from? Let us know in the chat. Have you got anything in mind? Are you going for box box art? Very much looking forward to seeing them painted. And that is everything. We are at the end of Loki Approved. That was fantastic. Absolutely awesome work, everybody. Thank you very much uh, to everyone that submitted work for us to check out this evening. Uh, it's been fantastic to look through, as always. Um... And yeah, sorry about the the channel not being opened until later on this evening. Uh, I just, I completely forgot. Um, if you want to paint one, just ask. I would 100% paint one of those for you, buddy. Um, it is Lapunu, yes. It is Mr. Wild Goose himself. The man, the myth, the legend. Um, but yeah, I... I uh, I completely forgot to open the channel. Um, everyone else did as well, to be fair. But Buffett was on it. He sorted it out. What a legend. Um, I've, yeah, I'm not going to do any more work on that terrain tonight. Um, 
I need to do a lot of, sort of normal brushwork, picking out the like the trim on the windows and around the door and stuff, which is fairly boring. Um, I'm going to use the airbrush for a lot of the internal bits and then just to fix up any issues, anything that I, I miss or, or go over or whatever. So I think I'll leave that until I'm off camera and just get that done. Um, because, because it'll be easier try, than trying to show you guys what I'm doing. Um, I think what I will do is I've got to load more terrain. So next week's live stream, I will either do one of the other pieces of terrain or I will be doing uh, some more of the, one more of the dinosaurs maybe. I've got another two dinosaurs to paint. Um, and then I've got uh, another like bunch of models I need to paint as well for, for that. Um, so it'll be either that or I'll paint one of the other terrain pieces, which is about the same sort of size, but like a, a solid piece. Uh, there's no like, oop. There's no like ruins and internals and stuff. It's just all the exterior, which would be easier to do. Um, so maybe we'll look at doing that instead and uh, see how we get on. Uh, but yes, thank you for submitting all your Loki approved stuff this evening. It's always nice to have a look through. Um, what else should I talk about? Me and Elson have been doing a podcast. I don't know if any uh, people are aware. I'm presuming people are. Um, but if you're not aware... <laughs> uh, if you're not aware, uh, me and Alison started doing a podcast. We started it a couple of weeks ago. The first episode went out. Uh, and then we put the second episode out on Monday, just gone. It's on Spotify. It's on Apple Podcasts. Um, there is a direct link to it as well, which I think we can put somewhere. I don't know. Um, but yeah, it's it's cool. It's obviously Wargaming Focus. It's called Wargamers Anonymous. Um where we pick a pop, pick a, a topic and talk about that, but we also have uh, all the nonsense that you would expect from a Pickle and Elston production. Um, so we talk about food, we talk about uh, random off-topic stuff that we just sort of randomly talk about. Uh, we talk about um, books and stuff, so we're trying to recommend um, a different book each each episode. Uh, so the one that we've just done Alston recommended the Twice Dead King the first one um, you're producing so much stuff I can't keep up I mean I don't really do that much it sounds like I do I live stream every Wednesday and every other Sunday I do one video every couple of weeks now ish and I do a podcast every couple of weeks that's it. That's all I do. And obviously, I do all the stuff like on Luke's channel, but that's work. Like, I mean, not that I don't enjoy it, and it's not me doing stuff, but like, it's work. It's not me doing stuff in my own time, sort of thing. Thank you for the link uh, there, Buffnet. That is uh, super, super helpful. Uh, so the first episode, we talked about uh, getting new players into wargaming, into the hobby. So that can be uh, like people that you are friends with that you want to get into playing. Like how to do it, like what games to introduce them to, where to start with playing or building or painting or whatever. Uh, it was quite a fun, quite a fun chat. Second episode, we talked about the fear of missing out or FOMO, or FOMO, um, which was a, a really, really fun chat um, about like how we deal with like limited release stuff or limited edition stuff or you know like pre-orders or kickstarters and stuff like that and how we deal with it, what we do, like how we feel about stuff and. Uh, things to look out for, I guess. Uh, we offer, we just waffle on a bit, to be honest. We also reviewed um, our first snack attack, uh, which was uh, Harry Burr this week. So we both picked a flavour of Harry Burr, and then we rated it, reviewed it, like how it how it rates as a war gaming snack, like something you could eat while you're playing a war game. Um, so we're open to suggestions for other topics. We're open to suggestions for uh, food suggestions for us to eat. I believe we've already got the one sorted for the next episode. Um, but we are still taking submissions. Then what we'll do is we'll just work our way through stuff and as we get to it. Um, but yeah, I'm really enjoying doing it. It's nice working on something with Elston again. Um, it's uh, Obviously, we're both used to doing the CWG together. Um, along with uh, Spud. <clears throat> obviously, we don't do that anymore. And... Uh, 
we kind of missed working together and this is nice and easy because it doesn't really take too much editing it took me the first episode took a little bit longer because we had some uh, audio issues but the second episode only took me a couple of hours to edit um, it took like maybe an hour and a half to record so it's a nice easy project that can go out and it's a different uh, different format like it's different it's not a video it's just audio so it's nice and easy people can listen to it whenever well you know the driving or working or whatever um, so yeah that's cool we are going to get some guests on at some point as well um, as and when it is sort of suitable for like whatever topic we're discussing if it's if it makes sense to get someone on because they're a bit more knowledgeable in whatever it is we're talking about then we'll do it we'll get some guests on we don't just want to get guests on for the sake of it um so it would be like i don't know if we got uh i don't know someone that like plays a lot of lord of the rings if we were talking about lord of the rings i guess or stuff like that like we, there's, there's a reason why we've got this person on and not just to have another person on um because that's the main thing. We wanted to do a podcast that was... It had all this, uh, the nonsense and the, the silliness of me and Elston. Uh, but also that where we could talk about topics and pick stuff and actually do... Um, you know, properly talk about stuff. So I'm enjoying doing it. I think Elston's enjoying doing it. You guys seem to be enjoying listening. We are... We, so I, which, I got an email earlier. Uh, we are number 11 in the, in the UK in the charts... Uh, for the games category. Which is insane that we are uh, 11th. Um, also pretty pretty cool though. Uh, pretty cool. Um, I think we were we? We, were, we were ranked like I think we were like number 2 in Denmark. Um like we we ranked number two in games in Denmark, so I think that's literally like we, we have got quite a few people from Denmark on on the server and that that tune in and watch stuff. So it would only make sense, I guess. Do a fox watch? I don't know what that is. Is that literally where you just watch it for foxes? That doesn't sound brilliant. <laughs> What's number one? I don't know. Uh, oh, number one, it was Critical Role. So number one and number two was Critical Role twice because one of them was Critical Role on the Critical Role podcast and one of them was Critical Role on the Geek and Sundry pod podcast or Geek and Sundry channel. There was there were, there were two Critical Roles that were, no, that were number one. One was like a BBC4 uh, podcast, BBC Radio 4 podcast. There were a few others on there as well, um, but yeah, we were number eleven in the UK, which that's, that's pretty cool. Um, Christmas number one podcast is the aim, right? Absolutely. If we can be, if at any point we are number one, that'll be amazing. Uh, I doubt it'll happen though. We're not going to overtake Critical Role. Let's not kid ourselves. Like, even if we somehow manage to overtake everybody else, there is absolutely no way that we are going to overtake uh, Critical Role. Uh, yeah, sit outside waiting for foxes. You could place bets. That would be, I think that would only be funny if we were both together. Um, well, <laughs> we obviously, me and Elsa live miles apart. <laughs> so, uh, kind of hard to do that. <clears throat> oh, God, my legs are aching today. Um,. But yes, uh, so yeah, if you've not listened to that already, go and check it out. Uh, check it on while you're commuting. We are still messing about with audio. Um, the second episode sounds a lot better than the first one, but there's still a few little bits and pieces we need to tweak. Um, so bear with us on that. We are we are on it. Um, but yeah, go and give it a listen if you want to. Uh, in terms of, oof, pardon me. In terms of videos, for myself, um, I have. Uh, a Marvel Crisis Protocol video coming up. Uh, I'm going to be using the speed paint set to get the uh, rest of the core box all painted. So I'm going to be using the speed paint set and then adding like some extra highlights and stuff up like I normally would do with contrast paints. But I want to use the speed paints and sort of go all the way through. 
um, uh, and uh, try out those paints uh, in a broader uh, use rather than just a couple. Um, so I've got that coming up. That'll probably be in the next couple of weeks. Hoping to get it mostly filmed this weekend. Um, and then hopefully get it edited and get it out sort of next Friday maybe. Um, we'll see. And then uh, what I want to do... The next video after that will then be the board build, I think. Uh, which should be good. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting that one filmed and, and getting it out. Uh, I don't watch Critical Role. Are they cringy, over-enthusiastic types with overly dramatic filming? Because I don't like that. No, uh, Critical Role, actually, I really, really like. Um, I've not listened to the podcast, which, although I might start doing that, because I've only just started going back... Um, I only started... I watched Vox Machina, um, and um, I started going back and watching all the live plays. Now, if that's what the podcasts are, but just in audio form, then I'll probably end up listening to those rather than watching. Because, although it, it's nice to look at, it's nicely presenting the stuff for the videos, there's not really anything to look at. Like, it's fun to see the players and stuff, and, like, see their face reactions and stuff. But it is very much an audio thing, really, for me. Um, like, when I've been watching it, I've not really been watching it. I've just been listening to it, and there's been an image on the screen at the same time. Um, so yeah, I might end up listening to the podcast instead um, if it's just the audio for that. Uh, Adam Dodge, no, I'm not drinking tonight, buddy. I don't really drink that often. Last week was a w <laughs> last week was different. <laughs> um, uh, but no, they're all uh, the the Critical Role guys. They are all um, they are all voice actors. Um, so they. Play D and D. Um, they play D and D, and but they like play it properly. Um, it is it's one of the better D and D sort of shows that I've watched. I've watched a few, um, and it is one of the better ones that I've watched. Um, so I mean, if, if you're into D and D and you fancy having a go, uh, give it a, give it a watch or a listen. Because I mean, I'd recommend it. I'm gonna, I'm think I'm gonna. I've started like having it on in the background when I've been painting and stuff. But I might listen to the podcast instead and just listen to the audio version. Uh, but I don't find it too over the top. I think it's exactly what it should be for a D and D podcast. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. Uh, Pickle Jar recommended me Vox Machina and it was sick. Just finished Vox Machina the other night. It was awesome. Elston put me onto it. Elston put me onto it. Well, Elston amongst other people, but I think Elston was one of the people that I'd heard mention it before I watched it. Um, they do accents almost as good as mine. Buffnet, you and me, buddy, you and me put so much effort into uh, into D and D, into voices and stuff. Uh, I feel like we should be asked to go on Critical Role. <laughs> Although to be fair, if we went on Critical Role, we could just use our normal voices, and it'd sound like we were putting voices on. Because the, cause they're all American. Um, but yeah, no, I, I'm enjoying it. I, I really enjoyed Vox Machina. I'm looking forward to... Um, I'm looking forward to season two, whenever that comes out. Um, hopefully not too long. Because uh, I really enjoyed the first season, so... Under a bridge, mostly Sarah said I can come out now. Well, that's nice of her to let you out every now and then, you know, isn't it? You've got to stretch your legs a little bit. We need to LARP next. I don't think I could handle LARPing. It's far too much physical effort. I excel at sitting behind my desk doing stuff. <laughs> Going outside in the real world and, and actually moving doesn't really sound like me. Have you seen me? I am not built for moving. Uh, I've, to be fair, I've always thought about doing LARPing. Like, not like, not like to do it as a proper regular thing, but I've always fancied giving it a go um, and trying it. Um, it does look like fun, to be fair, but it's one of those, I don't know, I'd have to do, I'd have to be with the right people, I think. 
I don't think I could do it with strangers. Um, or at least, like, not straight off. Like, maybe if I met a few people when I was there, I'd feel a bit more comfortable, I guess. But um, it's one of those things that's always kind of interested me, but at the same time, I've sort of thought, ah, it's a lot of effort. <laughs> it's a lot of effort. I can just replay Final Fantasy VIII for, like, the nine millionth time. Pip Pickle can LARP as Nacho Libre. We can rebuild Pickle, turn him into a fighting man. Ah, I think I'm far past the point of being rebuilt at this point. Uh, so Alfie got um, Ring Fit Adventure for the Switch. Uh, he got it for his birthday. Um, and he, he was, he's been playing it. Uh, like, well, the first weekend that he got it, he played loads of it. And then he's not really touched it since. Um, but... Um, he uh, he played it and he played it all weekend and then he was like, oh, "Come on, you you play, Daddy, you play." <clears throat> so I started playing it, and me being me, uh, you know when a game presents you with like a difficulty level and it's got like beginner, easy, normal, or hard, like there's no way that I'm going to put it on beginner or easy, ever. It'll be normal difficulty. Or if it's like a game in a series that I've played before, then I'll probably put it on hard. Like Halo, I always play that on Legendary because I don't see any point in not playing it on Legendary at this point because I've played that much of it. Um, so yeah, so maybe me. It comes up, it says, what difficulty do you want? I forgot that it was Ring Fit Adventure and that it was the difficulty would not be like, you know, no, like it is a normal game. The difficulty will be harder exercises. So I put it on, so, uh, uh, I think I put it on normal. Didn't put it on hard, but I put it on normal. After, I'd been watching Alfie doing it. I'm like, oh, this looks easy enough. And like when I started doing it, you, you have to do exercises. Um, you have to do exercises to like be y y your attacks. It's like a turn-based RPG type thing. And you do exercises to do your attacks. It absolutely killed me. I played it for like half an hour and I was done. Like I couldn't get up off the floor at one point. Um, no one's beyond physical redemption, Pickle. You just need to have the eye of the tiger instead of the hole of the donut. <laughs> Brilliant. Um, you could LARP as a man sitting on a wall next to his cart that's lost its wheel. We can laugh about it. It's okay. I only nearly died. Um, is Elston going? He could laugh as Pickles missing wheel. Brilliant. Um, I do need. I keep saying it. I do need to sort of get in shape a little bit. Like, no, I'm not talking like. I'm not saying that I need to, you know, become Henry Cavill buff. Like, I'm not interested in being like proper super muscle guy. Uh, TM pending for that's that for that superhero name, uh, but I would like to lose a little bit of the sort of dad bod, shall we call it? Um, although it's not to do with having a child. Um, <laughs> it's just because I eat too much. Um, I do need to lose a little bit of the weight, um, but it's it's just getting the motivation. Do you know what I mean? Although to be fair, I am a lot better at the moment. Um, one of the benefits of going and working for Luke, pardon me, is that I'm actually busy doing stuff. At, the, at my last job, I had a lot of time, well, all the time, where I was pretty much not doing anything. Um, and I would just be sat at a desk, so I would just eat and I would just snack on sweets and crisps and just all sorts. Whereas I don't have time to sort of sit and sit. I barely have time. Like, not this is not like Luke, like, forcing me to like, work through dinner or anything. But I, I have to sort of remind myself, no, I need to stop and, and eat, like, eat my dinner. Because otherwise I just forget because I'm just that into what I'm doing. 
so I'm not. I'm never really sat at a desk for too long. Um, I've never really like got nothing to do. So I'll just I'll eat this or whatever. Like I'm I'm busy with doing stuff, uh, which is good because it means I'm not snacking as much in the day. Um, I'm also sort of up and about on my feet doing more like that, which means I'm burning more calories than I would be doing if I was just sat behind a desk, which is also good. Um, it's just in the evening that I need to sort of sort out my eating, if I'm honest. Like tonight, like we've had lasagna for tea. <laughs> I had garlic bread with it. Not necessarily bad, but then I've just eaten a, a big bag of sweets <laughs> uh, before the before the stream went live as my, uh, as my after dinner treat. Maybe I need to... to um, do give myself some sort of incentive um and like keep a track of it like on the discord or on on the live streams or something um maybe i should do something like that we'll see i do want to lose a bit of weight though just because then you know i'll not look quite as round <laughs> yeah anyway enough for that are there any loonies here who can answer that? Is pear a new gender? I don't think pear is a new gender. I'm pretty certain it's a fruit. Fruit is healthy. Garlic, bread. Garlic and bread. Yep. Brilliant. Anyway... I'm going to wrap the stream up there because I feel like it's come to a natural conclusion. Um, thanks very much for tuning in this evening, everybody. It has been uh, a hell of a lot of fun. I've uh, got some painting done. I've got some work done on starting my terrain for my board, uh, which was a lot of fun to work on. I'm looking forward to getting that finished. Might even do some after the stream. I don't know. I don't know what my plan is. Um, so we'll see. Uh, but thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you've enjoyed yourselves. Thank you very much for everyone that submitted stuff for Loki Approved. It was awesome to look through all of that and see what you guys have been working on. Uh, massive thank you to all our current channel members right over on the main channel. Um, that is massively, massively appreciated. The support is, uh, is amazing. So thank you all very much for that. If you want to help support the channel, you can join the membership program like all those amazing people already have. Or you can use the links down below in the description. We've got one for uh, Grim Dice Tabletop Gaming and we've got another one for Element Games. So go and check both of those out. Buy whatever hobby supplies, new miniatures, new projects, all that sort of stuff. Buy it through those links. We get a little bit of a kickback from it and it doesn't cost you guys anything extra. It's a really, really cool way to help support the channel where you're, it doesn't really cost you anything extra. We just get a cut of... Um, of whatever it is that you buy um but obviously guys the best way to keep supporting the channel is just to keep coming and checking out these live streams over here on pickle vision go and check out the main videos over on the pickle jar the most recent one is the hulk dry brushing video highly recommend checking that out if you want more of a look at the dry brushes i was using earlier on tonight um so go and check that out and uh, just tell your friends spread the word like you know get the get the channels out there and get more people in here in the chat checking it out come and join us on discord if you want to we're a super awesome community really really friendly that i'm super proud of each and every one of you and uh yeah so that's going to do it for this one uh, i will catch you in the next one until then stay safe and uh, enjoy your hobby i'll see you later guys ta -ra!